Stefan in Stockholm, Sweden writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, having enjoyed hi-fi music in my home for many years, I've only ever gotten a phantom setter image, but I've never experienced a soundstage. Uh, I wasn't even sure if soundstage was something real, just audiophile bullshit, <laughs> or maybe just a minor nuance. Well, after reading the audiophile's guide, I finally understood that one key to soundstage is the space between and behind the loudspeakers. Um, following that, that guideline out of your book, The Audiophile's Guide, I now have a beautiful soundstage and the speakers are disappearing. Great. That nothing makes me happier. I mean, really, because as I've said a hundred different times, it's set up that is so important. And that's the part people miss a lot because, hey, it takes a lot of time to figure out how to set up a pair of speakers, how to set up a system. It just isn't something you can just do without a bit of training and about a bit of learning. So thank you for, for that. Anyway, um, looking at control rooms in the professional recording and mixing studio world, quite often there are very little space between the speakers and often a computer monitor between it. In the 70s, the speakers were even built into the wall. Is it possible to get a soundstage without the speakers being away from the front wall? Yes and no. So technically, it is possible. Technically, the space behind the speakers isn't really required to get that sense of soundstage. But I would say in 95, 99% of the cases, no, you can't. And there's a couple of reasons why. First off, the closer a speaker is to the front wall, the wall behind the loudspeakers, you get this, uh, this boundary effect. This, this, um, if the speaker isn't designed specifically to go up against a wall, uh, you have to change the entire crossover in the speaker. Because what happens is, when the speaker is close to the front wall, if it was designed to be out in the middle of the room, which almost every speaker I can think of is, you get reinforcement of uh, the uh, mid-bass uh, and the lower mid-range in an unnatural fashion. In other words, it's amplifying it beyond that which the um, designer had hoped uh, that to do it. And it sounds funny, and you destroy any chance of the soundstage. Another aspect, but you can compensate for that. If you, if you have speakers built into the wall, you can compensate for that as a designer. Here's another thing. A soundstage is an illusion. And there's two parts to any illusion. One is getting all the elements correct. So as I said, the vast majority of speakers are designed to be away from any surface, any walls, and they're designed to stand out in the middle of the room or, you know, away from those boundaries. That's how they're voiced. The second thing is a proper environment that supports the illusion. Your brain struggles to build this imaginary soundstage if there isn't space for it behind the speakers. And I know that sounds weird, but I mean, think about it in terms of food. Um, whenever we're using our imagination, if you look at a plate of food that is beautifully prepared, you're in the right mood to have it taste good. Conversely, and I don't want to get I don't want to make anybody upset here, but let's say you took uh, a, a, one of the best tasting chocolate desserts possible. I mean, you take one bite of this and you are in chocolate heaven, and then you make it look like a turd, okay? What happens? It tastes exactly the same, but you are gonna look at that and go, eh, that's disgusting, and you can't get over that. You just can't. I mean, if you ate it blindfolded, okay, fine. But our impressions, our expectations play a big role 
in creating illusion. So you need the speakers in the proper space, which is what the audiophiles guide talks to you and walks you through. And you need to have the right environment as best you can. And recording studios rarely do it, and they don't worry about depth. Uh, our recording studio at Octave Records, we worry about it a lot. I mean, this is the room that we, uh, we don't master in here, but this is the final check. And then we go back and change the master until it sounds perfect in here. And, and yeah, so we're not going to get into all that. But I hope that answers your question. Um, recording studios rarely give a, a, a rat's ass about depth and all that. I think most of them have it wrong. They just, they're not making records for audiophiles. They're not making records for people with great stereo systems. We at Octave Records are, but that's a whole other story. All right. Anyway, thanks for the question. You take it easy. I'll talk to you tomorrow.